Hello and welcome to this video on using ADO with worksheets. So what is ADO and why do we need it? Well ADO stands for ActiveX Data Objects and it's been around since the 90s. So the reason that we use it is that it provides a common interface where we can access data from different sources. So in other words, if we didn't have ADO for every different type of data source that we were dealing with, what we would have to do is write specific code for that. So because of ADO, we don't need to worry. The only difference that we have really is that we give it a different connection string. And we can get the connection strings from a website called connectionstrings.com. So how ADO works within our code is basically like this. We create a connection to whatever data source that we want to retrieve the data from. And then when we have the connection, we run a query. So a query could be something like select all the records from. Now a second thing we can do, and we'll be covering that in another video, but in that case, we would be calling things like store procedures rather than doing the queries in the actual code. So when we do the queries, we get the results into our record sets. This is how we store them in memory. And then we basically can write these out to our worksheet. So this is kind of the three step approach, the connection, the query, and the record set. Now, as I just kind of referred to there, if we're writing professional code and we're creating, like say, a really professional system, we normally have our queries on the database itself. So they'd be in a query on access or they'd be in a store procedure in SQL Server. And then we'd use the command of ADO to pass parameters to the store procedures if required and to retrieve the data back. But what we're doing today, we're going to be doing our queries in the actual VBA code. So now that we've had a good overview of what ADO is, let's go ahead and have a look at some code. So because ADO is an external library, we use tools references and then we check on Microsoft ActiveX Data Objects 6.1 library. So this will add the library to our project. And then we have access to all the ADO functionality. Now the first thing we always do is we create our connection. So we connect to the data source and we basically create a connection variable like this. And when we're finished with our connection, we want to make sure mm -hmm. that we close it. So we use connection and close. And in between then, we'll do our work like doing the query and so on. So now we're going to open the connection and what we need is a connection string. So this is the connection string for using Excel. Now, if you want to get the connection strings, you can go to a website and the website is called connectionstrings.com and you basically look up whatever connection string you want, whatever you're connecting to, and you get this string. And basically, the only thing you really need to change here is the file name. So we're going to put in the file name for this workbook. And the file name is the full file name, including the folder. Now, once we've opened our connection, the next thing we want to do is we want to create the query that we're going to use. So we create the query, and the query is simply a string. It's a string of texts. And this is basically in SQL, which is Structured Query Language. Now, we'll be looking at this more in a later video, so we'll just really do the basics today. But this query, select asterisk from, basically selects all the records. Now, we put the table name, in this case, it's the worksheet. We put it in the square parentheses, and we end it with a dollar sign. So this is the data that we're going to use today. And you can see it's quite simple. We've just got a list of fruit, and we've just got the different sales amount for that fruit. So our code is just going to bring back all the records and we're going to write it out to our other worksheet, which is the out worksheet. So the next thing we need is a record set. And the record set is essentially where the query, the results of the query are going to be placed. So we use open on the record set and then we just basically give it our query and we give it our connection. So we're basically saying to the record set, open at this connection using this query. And so when we run the code, we'll get it back to the record set. And what we want to do then at this point is we want to write it out to the worksheet. And we can use the range function called copy from record set. So we basically just say where we want it to go, and the, which is the actual range. And then we say copy from record set. 
and we basically just pass the records that we want to copy it from. So you can see that is quite straightforward. So let's go ahead and just add the headers here. So we're just going to add them simply here. We'll do it a bit better in a minute. We'll go ahead and we'll run the code and see exactly what we get. So you can see that when we ran the code, we got all the results, fruit and sales to our worksheet. And now what we're going to do is just going to add a bit of a query here so that we can see that the output is different than what we start with. So it just really illustrates that our code is working correctly. So we run the code again and you can see that we got Apple. So you can see that the code here is not anything extremely complicated. The only thing that looks complicated is the connection string. And as I said, for Excel, we're just going to use the same one pretty much all the time. Now, if you want to write out the headers, this is actually the proper way to do it. Rather than hard coding the values, we basically can read the headers from the worksheet or from the record set. Now, let's run it again, this time with the headers. And you can see it wrote out our headers this time using the for loop. So this is essentially a basic query using ADO. So we can actually do all this in one query statement. Now it does have some restrictions on it. So you might want to use the record set depending on what you're trying to do. But let's have a look how we can do it in just one query. So we don't need any record set code here. What we're basically saying is insert into which is a database command and the results of select from. And what we do is we just use the connection execute command and this will execute the query. So in other words, it will insert into the out worksheet whatever the result we get from our select from the simple. Now the one disadvantage that it has is that you, you have to already have the headers there because it's like it's putting it into a table. Now the real disadvantage is that it actually, if there's no records in it, it gets confused about the type. So you see here it, it added the records at the end because insert adds them at the end as it's an insert command. So if we have any spaces left on our worksheet, it will put them after those spaces. So we have to delete the entire row and now it will write out the values as you can see here. Now you can see the green thing here and this is because the insert command gets a bit confused when it copies the data. So the only way really around it is to have a dummy value here and then it will insert the sales as a number. In this case, it's inserting the sales as text. Now we've been looking at copying from a worksheet to another worksheet where both worksheets were actually in the same workbook. Now, if you're in a different workbook, it's a bit trickier. So in this example, we've got data in a different workbook and we're going to read that data into our worksheet. Now, one big example, or one big advantage, I should say, of ADO is that we can read from a workbook when it's closed. So the first thing that we need to do, or to kind of keep in mind, is that the table that we're going to read from, we have to have kind of a different connection or a different way of connecting to it. And we can do it without using connection open. So what we do here is we create the source files, we just get the name, and then we use a string like this, which you can see is pretty much like a simple connection string. And we place this before the table name that we're gonna use, so the source of the table name. So that table name is actually sales. But because it's, um, and we'll just simplify our query a bit, but because the name is a variable, so we'll, we just have to use the ampersand and put it outside the quotes. And so then we're going to add our source sheet in like this. Now we get rid of simple here, it should be sales. And our out worksheet is actually the company out worksheet. So basically it's pretty much the same. It's just the workbook that we're reading from. We just have to have its own connection string in front of it. So we run this code and you can see that it brought back all the data without having to open the workbook. So the real power of using ADO is the queries because we can do so much and the only thing that has to change in the code is the actual query itself. So for example, if we wanted to get back all the sales greater than 60, 
It's very easy to do this with some basic SQL. So we basically change and run it and you can see the result of this. So we can do many other things with SQL and say some of the examples of things that we can do is like we can group values. So we could say for each one of the fruit, how much is the total? So similar to a pivot table. So we group by fruit and we say sum of sales. That means we want to basically calculate the sales. And when we run this code, you can see that it gives us back the totals for each one. Now, if we want the order, so say we want to sort by the highest to the lowest, what we can simply do is order by the field and we just put DESC after, that means in descending, and run this code again, and you can see we get the order in descending. So the queries are very, very powerful, and as I said, once you're attached to the data source and once you have the output, if you want to change what you're bringing back, it's just a matter of changing the queries. And as I said, they're incredibly powerful. So this video shows you how to use ADO or ActiveX data objects with Excel. Now, if you have any questions or query, please leave them in the comments below. And if you want to hear more about my upcoming videos, then click on the subscribe button. Now, if you'd like some more free Excel VBA resources, then check out my website, excelmacromastery.com. There are major articles on all the major areas of Excel VBA. Each article has an easy to navigate table of contents, as well as a quick guide that allows you to easily find the syntax you need. And there's tons of coding examples that you can copy and use in your own macros. You'll also find techniques that are not available anywhere else. I also have a VBA tutorial and in this tutorial there's lots of activities and solutions so that you can try them all for yourself and it's all absolutely free. So that's all for me and I hope to see you on my next video.